Let's look at what the website is asking you to do when it gives you an exercise in annotating proofs. Now this is a way to practice uh, your mastery of the rules by seeing them employed in a proof but not labeled so that you can go through and see if you can identify what rules are in fact being used. Let's go over here to number four. Now this is a good way, as I said, to master the rules so that you have to memorize. You do want to memorize the rules. When it comes to doing the proofs and taking exams, not only will you save time if you have it memorized, but you just begin to see the connections that, uh, that are available to you and doing the proofs becomes much easier than if you try to um, just rely upon the list that's given in your book. So I do strongly suggest that you memorize them. Okay, first of all, uh, this is an entire proof that's been given. You see here are the premises and the conclusions out here to the right. And they show that through three additional steps they can uh, demonstrate that the conclusion follows. However, the steps that they've taken are not justified, so we need to go in here and, uh, and add the justification or the rule that justifies every step along the way. Okay, so we see that they have negated. They have not B or D. How can we get that from these premises? Well, you might think that you could get it here by modus tollens. However, if we negate the consequent, we would have to negate the antecedent, and that's not what we're looking at. So what else could we say Well, notice that we have here H or not C. Here we have if H, which is this first disjunct, then not B. And if not C, which is the second disjunct, then D, which follows identically from the rule of a constructive dilemma. So we'll say from line 1 and 2 and 3, constructive dilemma. Now, how can we get k and j? k and j is right here. It's the consequent of this larger conditional statement. Well, now that we have line 5, we've satisfied the antecedent. So then line 6 would follow from lines 4 and 5 by rule of modus ponens. So how do we get j by itself? Well, since line 6 is a conjunction, we can simplify to either conjunct. So it follows from line 6 by rule of simplification. Let's check our proof. Congratulations. So you can see here, all this annotating exercise is asking you to do is supply the, the lines and the rule that justify each step in the proof.